Hi guys, it's KJM and I know it's been a while. You're probably wondering how come I have not been doing Hallmark movie reviews. Well, Hallmark's basically killed the springtime. Most of March we got rerun movies um, that were from Hallmark Movies and Mysteries that I watched last summer or last fall before Countdown to Christmas started. So I know some of this probably happened because of the writer's strike, but I thought Hallmark could have gotten a little more creative, maybe even pull some movies out of their vault from like, I don't know, 20 years or so ago or even 10 years ago that they don't play anymore and put some of the classics on. I, I loved um, Guiding Emily. Definitely would give that movie like probably an 8 out of 10. I loved um, More to Grow with Rachel Boston. I'm a huge Rachel, Rachel Boston fan and I thought that movie was like a 9 out of 10. I definitely watched the one with Niall Matter and um, I forget the beautiful actress. She's also in Caribbean Summer. I'm going to be really mad that I can't remember her name off the top of my head. But I've seen the um, that movie about her being the only woman to um, be like an air pilot type of thing. And I like that movie too. I would have given that an 8 out of 10. What I didn't want to do is watch it during springtime and it premiere on regular Hallmark as... A brand new movie. Yeah, it's brand new to the Hallmark Channel, but it's not, they're not even movies that were created in 2024. So, some other things started to happen for me, and to whom much is given, much is required. My schedule is extremely tight right now, so doing these reviews, it's harder than hard, but I am still watching Hallmark. I'm always still watching Hallmark. But my thoughts about what they did most of March is until they take themselves seriously, I'm not going to waste my time and take myself seriously and try to keep up with these reviews. I understand that the writer's strike affected a lot of stuff. We're used to seeing reruns of Christmas movies maybe the last week or so, week or two of um, December. And that makes sense. People are still doing their final Christmas shopping. People are spending time with their families. I think that's completely um, understandable, especially since they usually start the movies now, like in October, you know, for Christmas. But now, doing this for the springtime and calling it something brand new, I just, I had a huge problem with that. So basically, that's why you didn't get a review from me, but I did watch Shifting Gears starring Katherine Barrow and Tyler Hines now. When Megan and I were first talking about this movie, and I don't think Megan's gone and watched it. I think she even forgot to record it. When we were talking about this movie, at first I was calling it Shitting Gears, because I was like, what is this? What about car restoration says, um, says springtime? And it just felt like a movie that they had sitting back there that they just, you know, hadn't thought it was good enough to put out. And they're like, okay. We've done three reruns in, sat, uh, in March every Saturday. Let's just put on shit and gear. I mean, shift in gears. Let's just go ahead and do that. So I was not impressed with this movie, giving it a 6 out of 10. But compared to Tyler Hines' Christmas movie, which I thought was one of the worst. One of the worst. Definitely in the top five worst movies I've ever watched on Hallmark. I thought Shifting Gears was a... Um, a step up for him. So I'm giving this movie a 6 out of 10. Not bad, but you know my rules. 7, 8, 9, 10s means it's definitely worth tuning into. Uh, you know, so a 6 is like, if you're super bored, I, I don't know. Let me get into the premise of this movie and then let me get into what didn't work and what worked in this movie. Okay, so the premise is Jess and Luke, their fathers used to be like best friends and in business together, but then Luke's father got an opportunity to screw Jess's father over. Luke knew he didn't warn Jess, and Jess's father took a financial hit um, based on what Luke's father had done, and Jess felt betrayed, so she broke off her relationship with Luke, as she should, because I understand it's his father, but our parents are not always right, and Luke didn't feel comfortable with what his dad did in the past, to Jess's father, but he wasn't man enough to step up and be honest to Jess and at least warn her. 
So their relationship fell apart and now we're at Jess and her dad's car garage. We find out the garage is in trouble. Jess is a female mechanic. Shout out to all the female mechanics out there. And she's really into car restoration. Luke is basically wearing a suit and tie and he's doing everything his daddy says he should do. And he is doing his part in the company, though you can tell he's not happy. He's really happy re restoring cars, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, Jess's dad is about to lose the car garage, the, the, um, the shop that they have, and they've got to do something. So Jess enters a car restoration competition um, where they can win some serious money and it can help them keep um, the car shop. So she enters, she's the only woman on there. I think there's like six contestants and she is like one of them. And I love that she was in this male dominated field. Now someone that has been, I have been in a male dominated field um, for a really long time. Um, I'm gonna tell you this, I had some issues with some of Jess's character, like her character. So here's the thing, I understood she had stage fright and being on TV was gonna be a whole lot but when you're a woman in a male dominated field, there's a couple rules you really need to follow. And one of them is whatever your weakness is, you don't let them know what that is. I understood Luke knew her weakness just because he knew her before, like personally. But that's the number one thing. If they smell fear, you're a woman, they're going to take you out and it is what it is. So I've had times I've had to cry in the bathroom. Okay. Um, I've had times I've had to talk myself into still moving forward. Um, you have to deal with stuff like sexual harassment. You have to deal with people thinking you're not that smart as the men in the room. I definitely try to outwork the men and I did it for the women in my field that they had to go home to their families. I'm not married with children so I could do the 12 to 16 hour days, six, seven days a week. I could do it and I did it for a really, really long time. That doesn't mean I didn't have some of the same feelings and concerns that Jess had, but it's never let them see you sweat. So if you're a young woman that's thinking about entering a field that's male dominated, remember this. Second rule after never make them see you sweat is that you do not date the competition. You do not get romantic with the competition. I've been working in this country since I was 14 and only one time I've ever dated a colleague. And honestly, like he pursued me and thank God he was a loner. So it didn't become an issue when we broke up, when I broke up with him. Um, but <laughs> that was unusual circumstances. And I did that once and I'll never do it again. And it was something that really nobody else in our office knew. We were colleagues, so nobody was higher than the other person. And so there wasn't that kind of issue. But I would say if you're in a male dominated field, first thing you got to do is don't date them. Don't date them. Don't flirt with them. Don't give them any instinct that you could be attracted to them. Treat them like you would if it was another woman. And if you're straight and you're not attracted to women, um, you do your job and there's no mixing business and pleasure. And I have done this most of my life. And I feel like that has made me successful in what I do because I, I just don't play that. I'm going to put in the hours and I am certainly not going to be out here flirting and all that other stuff. I just don't, I just don't have time for it. And like I said, I've been in my field for a super duper long time and these are the rules I followed. So Jess's character, seeing her insecurities play out, when she's talking to her friend, I don't mind her being vulnerable. But when she's dealing with the other guys in the competition, it was kind of an issue for me because you're the only woman you're representing us. And it's not that you can't be vulnerable. It's not that you can't have obstacles you need to cross over. It's just this is not the time or the place to do it. So that was my thing about the character. Okay, I didn't think this movie was going to be worth doing a part two, but I do want to tell you what some of the Hallmarkies thought about this movie, what worked for this movie, what didn't work for this movie. So fortunately or unfortunately, there's going to be a part two. You can let me know what you think about it. And I know there's some women out there that's going to be like, it's okay to have stage fright. It is, but you got to practice, babe. You got to practice at home or you got to practice in the bathroom, but you can't let the men who already think you're stupid know that you have a weakness. And you've got to turn your weakness into a strength. That is my opinion. So if you're a woman in a male-dominated field, you don't have to tell me what the feel is. 
but you can put some tips and tricks in the comments for all the young women up and coming that are entering male-dominated fields.